Greetings, Retro Zoltan here. So I was asked to make a video on how to use Show, and instead of doing a whole script, I think it would be more educational if you just went through it with me. So here I am about to add a few systems to the RG405V. I'm not good at doing unscripted stuff, so please bear with me. So um, as a prerequisite to all this, pick out a few systems that you think you'd like to add as far as as um, this is concerned that did not have Atari links and it didn't have Pico 8 so I thought those would be good systems to add I'm gonna show a brief thing on how to do that you just basically put the SD in your computer and there'll be a games folder and you just pop them in there pop two different folders in there one for Atari Lynx and one for Pico 8 once you have those you can pop them in now for full effect I'm going to clear the whole system and start from scratch so hopefully this won't be too jumbled. I am going to try my best. I'm not great at doing these uh, on the fly. This will be like my earlier videos, but I really want to show how to do this. And I learned some things, so I want to, um, I want to show you what I've learned. So right off the bat, I'm going to clear everything. If you don't know how to clear everything, I guess this is a good place to start. I believe it's in System... Reset options, erase all data, factory reset. That'll get rid of everything except for what's on your SD card, fortunately. It doesn't get rid of the important things that the Embernic originally comes with. So when you first boot up, it's always going to ask you this. Very easy. You just do English is already picked, usually. But if not, make sure that's the one that's highlighted. Start use, and then it goes ahead and configures everything. And we start from scratch. Now, one of the things I wanted to point out is if you did want to add a system that's not here already, you can certainly do it by connecting to wireless and just go ahead and finding an emulator that is the Android compatible. You can find it on the Play Store. So if you wanted to play Atari Lynx, for instance, you could go on there and probably find something for Atari Lynx. Um, but if you want to be... I don't know. I it all depends if you like these using these individual uh, emulators. But if you don't like me, if you don't like using all these individual ones, basically when when you're using GIG Show, it's just a front end for RetroArch. It makes it way easier to use, in my opinion. But my my whole philosophy at this point, my whole way of thinking now is to try to make sure the games work through RetroArch. If you can get it to work through RetroArch, you can get it to work through GIG Show, which is a lot better. It's going to be like a, just a quick minimal of what you need to do for RetroArch, and then we'll get into GIG Show. So the prerequisite is just to test a few things. So if you go into RetroArch, and the first time it's asking for granting access to external storage, yes, that's fine. Allow. It's doing a few things. And that's normal. Okay, before even doing anything, my recommendation is to set up a few things. One of the things is to be able to, when you're in, when you load up a game, an easy way to get out. So for that, so you go into input and you go to hotkeys. Make sure that confirm quit is on and it is. And then you're going to want to go to, is it quit controller combo? Yes, quit controller combo. Um, my, my advice is to do something simple. Like I like a hold start for two seconds or hold select. So I'm going to do a hold select for two seconds option, hold for two seconds. Okay. That's one, that's one important thing you need to do. Another thing you want to do is you want to get rid of the, what it likes to do is show you map all the controls to the screen. And we're going to turn that off cause it's annoying. So, so you go to on screen display on screen overlay. And you just turn that off. And you just do that by pushing B to turn it off and then A to back out. Okay. Those are the two things you need to do for a retro arch to get this to work right. Okay. We'll test the three things that we want to get going. So one of the things we wanted to do was get the Atari links going. So we'll go into load content. We'll go into storage, SD card, and we'll go into Atari links. And one of the ones, so I, I'm loading up uh, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. So we'll try that. It's asking the core, which core to use. 
Just through tr trial and error, I found out that Beetle Linux doesn't work so well. So we'll use Handy. And we'll have to remember this for the future. So you load it up. Here it is. And it's working. So Atari Lynx is working. We can start playing it if we want. That sort of thing. Okay. And I'm going to try to get out by holding select. Oops. Of course, that emulator, when you push select, it rotates the screen, but whatever. Anyway, so we'll go test, and we'll go test for Pico 8. Again, the same thing. So what I, one thing I noticed for Pico 8 is not every one's going to work here. Very limited selection. So we go to load content. Again, storage, SD card. And we're going to go to Pico 8, which I, I put in here. Pico 8. And we're going to pick one. Uh, some of these don't work, like Celeste it doesn't work. Dungeon Crawler doesn't work. A lot of them don't work. I've gone into forums and that sort of thing, and, and they're saying the the, co the retro arc cores are still being built. I don't think they'll ever finish, but some of them do work. I think this one might work. And it does. And it works great. So you can, that's the thing, it's a little bit of trial and error. You could probably find a forum um, of people saying which ones work in RetroArch and which ones don't. I'm tempted to make one myself, um, which would be, be kind of nice to have one if one doesn't exist. Because there's a lot of Pico 8 lovers out there. And I, I think it looks great on this system. So so that's that. That's how to get it to work through RetroArch. And hold on select to get out. So Commodore 64 was, um, someone was asking for that very recently, like yesterday. Computer emulation is tough on a handheld, in my opinion, because there's no keyboard, obviously. But if you can get it set up just right, you can still play these. It's just a little bit more complicated. But there's some people out there that really reminisce about the, the Commodore 64 and Radio Shack color computer, that sort of thing. So I'm going to go into storage again, SD card, and I have a ton in here, like a thousand or so. And we're just going to pick one, a uh, random one. Let's try Ace of Aces. And I think it's going to ask me like a ton of uh, cores. So this is like a trial and error thing for you. If, you. if you're trying to get something going and it's giving you a whole list of cores, you're going to have to try them and see which ones works. I think 128 didn't work for me. So I'm going to try the uh, 64 fast. And you can hear, if you listen, you can hear it's making old computer noises. So it works. It's still loading. Only the, the true lovers of old computers would appreciate these sort of noises and how long it takes to load some of these games. But as you can see, it's, it's working. It's letting me do stuff here. But if you ever do need to use, use the keyboard in this particular emulator, if you push select... It gives you the whole keyboard. It does load, but it's going to take a little experimenting on your part as far as how to push certain keys and that sort of thing. But again, with JG Show, you're going to deal with the same issue. It's going to—it's just the front end of this. If you, if you're cool with that, then you're done. Then you can just say thank you, Retro Zoltan, for nothing, and then just move on. <laughs> but uh, honestly, um, JG Show—it's basically it's a front end to RetroArch, and it's got some awesome features, and it's just a, a good way to stay organized. I, I just like it a lot better than like loading a core and then loading the game. It's fine. I mean, it, it'll work. So I'm going to go ahead and download. It's a hard spell, but G-Show. It should show up if you just start typing it. It's pretty popular. Go ahead and install. Okay, there it goes. I'm just going to go ahead and load up G-Show for the first time. And it's going to ask to uh, download platforms. And what you're going to do is you're going to want to check everything that you want it to do. And you can, don't worry about, don't load up everything. Just load up what you need. You can add more later. So we're going to do Atari Lynx. Commodore 64 was one of them. And Pico 8. What's another one? And you just click import and it's just gonna basically load the three systems that you asked for. So we'll start with Atari Lynx. So to get it working right, you have to add, basically you have to add the path, which, which is where your ROMs are. So you push, click path, click add more. 
you go into your menu, you look for your SD card, which in my case, it's in a folder called games. And then you go into Atari Lynx. And then you just say, use this folder and type sync. It's starting, it's going to grab all the information that it can. It's going to start grabbing a screenshot or box shots, all that sort of thing. It's going to town right now. So JG Show tries to load the core out of RetroArch that it thinks it needs. We want to make sure that it's loading up the right one. So to do that, we click this here and we kind of scroll down carefully and it's using RetroArch 64 Metafin. I don't know what that is, but if you remember it was, so if you look, you'll see RetroArch Handy, um, but you want RetroArch 64, which is what we have. So you want RetroArch 64 Handy, if we can find it. Yeah, here we go. RetroArch 64 Handy, which we know works. And if you push save. So now if we go in the library now, we're going to see that the screenshots are coming in. So we'll just load up. Let's try Batman. This is, um, this is a warning that comes up a lot. But basically, it's, um, it's just warning you that um, there's other processes going. You can just confirm. And it works. You can play. And I, I'm really bad at it, apparently. Now, hold down select to get out done and it's still downloading i think it's still down yeah it is it's still scraping on its own for the rest of the screenshots it won't get everything but it'll get a lot of them so we'll go on with pico 8 which i believe we'll have to add the path again add the path it's still in the atari links folder so we'll go to pico 8 and the same thing's going to happen you say use this folder allow sync it's doing the same thing i only had 17 files in here this is the one did I know it worked? No. Okay. So if you get a black screen like this, that means it didn't work. So this would be a fail. I think it's because I didn't pick the right Pico 8 thing as well. We'll make sure it's using the right Pico 8. So we have we have a RetroArch 64. That's the one you want to try. So we have Fake 8 and we have Retro 8. So let's try Retro 8. Save. And we'll go to... We'll try this one. Okay. So that's what it was. It didn't like the... It didn't like what we were using. So again, they're not all going to work. It's not perfect with Pico 8. It's getting there. And then we have Commodore 64, which again, we have to add the path, which we'll do here, Commodore 64. And I'm just going to use the same folder that I did last time. And this is a lot. There's a lot for it to chew on here, so it's going to be a while. So I'm just going to let that go. Okay, so that's that. If you go in the library again, Here's all the games. Let's try Action Biker. It's using a it's using something something called Frodo, which I haven't had luck with. And as you can see, it's just it's pretending it's a computer 64, a Commodore 64, but it's not doing anything. So we have to pick something else. We're gonna go into here to change what it's using for a core. And you scroll down. It's using Frodo. Frodo doesn't work very well. So again, we're gonna look for RetroArch 64, and we're gonna wanna use, I think, Vice. 64 is the one that works the best. So we're going to pick that and save. We'll try Action Biker again. Confirm. And it's loading up the game. It's going to take a while. There might be ways to speed it up, but again, I don't play with computer emulation as much as gaming emulation, but I just wanted to give an example. This is actually pretty fun. Reminds me of Paperboy. Really lets you know when you screw up though, I'll tell you. All right, so here's the Commodore 64 emulation working pretty good. And I have to say, this is uh, pretty interesting. Oh man. I don't know what I'm doing, but you get the idea. That's pretty much it. Uh, Jai Ji Show just is a front end for RetroArch. And um, it just makes things a little bit easier. You're going you're gonna to get your list of games. You don't have to go through all these weird RetroArch menus. Some people love RetroArch. Keep using it. Don't use Jai Ji Show if you don't like it. But for those who want it a little bit like the box shots, like it a little bit more organized, that sort of thing, it's got you covered.
So I hope that helps everybody. And uh, you know, if you have any problems with other systems or find out anything interesting, put it in the comments below. I'd, I'd be interested in seeing how, how well this worked for you, how well this instructional video worked for you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.